I'm Norman Varney with AV Room Service. And uh, in the last couple of segments, we talked about uh, reverberation problems and reverberation solutions. And uh, uh, in this, this segment, we're gonna do a crash course on room modes. So room modes are perceptual by um, muddiness, a droning, um, inarticulation, um, nonlinear bass response. And it occurs when an enclosed space is energized by sound waves um, from going from, say, the loudspeaker, the source, down, say, the length axis to the um, boundary and then reflecting back. And when it's divisible, when that wavelength, that frequency is divisible by the, the room dimensions, then they, um, they can become a standing wave. So rather than the waves moving like so, the, um, the sound moves down and returns and is in phase and becomes a standing wave. And of course, there's standing waves um, for each of the axes as well as uh, tangential and, um, and oblique modes as well, although those are not as energetic as the axial modes. So those are the ones that we are usually most concerned with. Um, I picture um, a trough or, or rather, uh, waves of water like in a bathtub and if you get uh, if you on one end of the tub if you start uh, pushing the water in a rhythm and you do it just right you can create a, a standing wave so it you know you've got a fundamental wave that's going like this and then um, that's the first resonant frequency and then if you get twice that double the frequency, then you've got your second mode and third mode and on up. So in chart number one, this is a, um, a real test analysis in a room. And what this is, is a gated sweep. There's a 16th of a second on, a 16th of a second off. And the blue is, in, is after um, our particular acoustic treatment. The red is before our acoustic treatment. The sound, the uh, the sweep, the gated sweep sounds like it starts at like 16 hertz and goes on up. Sounds like do 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 and then returns back down. In the in the red graph there, what you would hear is it'll sound like do 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 it'll get all sloppy and slurry, and so that articulation is gone, and so the dynamic range, as you can see the on the plot in the um, in the chart, the articulation is is pretty poor. As far as the the droning muddiness, all you have to do is is uh, place your ears. You know, just go and walk over in, into the corner while music is playing and you'll hear all the modes that exist in your particular room uh, uh, being played when they are excited. In this chart, this is a, an analysis that we do. Um, this is a modeled analysis, not like the test, the actual physical test is in the chart before. So this is estimation, um, computer modeling, and it shows how you can calculate the uh, different room modes in a particular room given by the, the dimensions. Over on the left-hand side, you can see the, the modal frequencies for the length, width, and height. So you can see the fundamental and you can see the multiples of that length. Um, so let's say the, the frequency is, uh, um, the first resonant frequency is 40 hertz, the next one will be 80 hertz, 120 hertz, and, and so on. And so there are one for each of the axes too. And so over on the right hand side you see the spacing between the three axes. And you can see down on uh, below in the mode spacing how they stack up against each other. 
um, what you don't want is for them to stack up one on top of another because uh, that just exasperates that particular frequency multiple times. So for example, you don't want dimensions that are divisible by another dimension. In other words, a cube um, would be a terrible room because particular frequencies would be really loud and particular frequencies would be really quiet. In this chart, you can see a couple of different, well, first you can see free air. So this is the frequency response of, of room modes in free air and it's nice and linear. It's totally perfect, it's flat because there's no reflections um, to cancel uh, upon itself. And then in a good room, you're gonna get a response someone like that curve. And in a poor room, you're going to get something like that. And that's pretty typical. And understand that it can vary by an easy 25 or 30 dB in, as far as um, uh, nonlinear base response. So it's, it's really apparent. Base response is probably the most um, obvious, or, or let's say nonlinear base response in a room is probably the most obvious to those without trained ears. So let's talk about some fun facts of room modes. This chart may look a little familiar to you. We showed it, um, this has been modified somewhat. This shows the different uh, acoustic principles in, in small room acoustics. And uh, we were talking before about ray acoustics and with room modes we're talking about wave acoustics. And so we're talking instead of particle velocity, we're talking about particle pressure. And so the acoustic principle is wave acoustics and the, the frequencies that we're talking about are under 300 hertz. There can be standing waves of course above that, but there are, they are so many and so close together that you don't perceive them. When they are in lower in frequency response, um, they are very obvious um, to as far as perception. So the things that influence it are the, the, the size of the space, how big it is, will dictate what can be supported. So room dimensions dictate the, the room modes that will be heard. This is a picture of a tube with a loudspeaker on one end of it and it's closed on the other end of it and it's got a bunch of tiny little styrofoam balls in it. And as you've got a tone generator, you can create standing waves inside there and watch them. And so it looks, though this is not a video, that's what it looks like uh, live as far as the standing waves. You can see where the, the, the pressure is at its max and where it's at its lowest by the stacking of the uh, styrofoam balls. Now in a space, you can do the, you can hear the same thing. Um, so if you've got a tone generator in your room and you can um, you know, turn it up and, and change the sweep, as you're sitting there, you can hear this grid, if you will, of standing waves move about the room in all three axes. Um, now you can, if you've got just a particular tone, you don't have a sweep generator, but you've got a particular tone and it is uh, sympathetic with the, the room dimensions and creates a standing wave, you can move about yourself in the room and find out where those high pressure and low pressure points are. This is what that grid that I described looks like in, in reality. This is obviously a, a model, but um, this is really what it would look like in a, a room, a particular uh, mode that's energizing the room. And you can see the, um, the red is, is going to be a low pressure point. The blue is going to be a high pressure point. And that's just a, a snapshot of the, the room. And so that's one particular frequency only. Um, so as you change the, the, uh, the tones or the frequency, these are going to move about. Room modes take time to develop. Um, the lower the frequency, the more time it takes to, to, um, uh, to travel down to that end of the, the room and return back. For example, a, a 40 second, I'm sorry, a 40 hertz tone takes about, uh, well, it's a little over 28 feet long. And to, to go down and return, reflect, um, takes about 50 milliseconds. A 250 hertz tone is going to take uh, only about 8 milliseconds. 
Another fun fact is that room modes are audible in the near field, something that people don't often think about. In chart six, I've laid out, this is a, um, again, just modeling of a particular room and it is showing the room modes along two axes. So this is just a, a one dimensional plot showing where the speakers are and where the listener is. And then of course on the left hand side showing the, the width axis, they would be duplicated on the, the right hand side. I'm just not indicating that. So these are standing waves and what you want to try and do and we'll cover in the next section is you yourself don't want to be placed in one in a peak or a in a a mode or or an anti node nor do you want to have your speakers there too if you have the the speakers in a, a peak pressure point then you're going to exasperate that particular frequency if you put them in a in a null where there's no pressure at all um, may not do you any any harm but um, if you were to play that particular frequency you're just not going to get any power out of it you're not going to i mean you can in a in an um, anti-node if you are listening in an anti-node it can be an easy 25 30 db difference now room modes are pretty predictable in a rectangular type of a room in this diagram, you can see a particular frequency, a particular resonating frequency at, at 81.1 hertz in a rectangular room. And then if we splay the walls, um, which is a common misnomer for playback systems, done in recording studios where you're actually recording, and that makes sense, but in a playback venue, you don't want to be splaying the walls because this is what happens. It'll shift the frequency, and that's no big deal but it will make it nearly impossible for you to predict what frequency, where, and how to treat it. Um, you'd have to literally go in and, and sniff it with, uh, at minimum, an SPL meter and find out what's going on. Um, so you can see a splayed wall just introduces chaos in what would be an organized, um, easy to deal with, easy to predict um, type of a, a situation. Room modes are much more of a problem in smaller rooms. The larger the room, the more modes and the more distributed they, they become. So it's, they're less obvious perceptually. In a small room, you have few and they tend to stand upon each other more often and uh, they draw attention to themselves. So the smaller the room, the more difficult it is. Another fun fact is that as you uh, add absorption, you'll smooth out the, the room modes. Um, so in a concrete bunker, we've got a, um, a Q factor that's, that's pretty high. And as you add absorption, that Q is going to lower and, and broaden. And in real world situations, it is common when we go in and, and before and after treatment, you may have a, a peak that has a, a band width of a maybe not quite three hertz and adding absorption will more than double that. So it does pick, it does smooth out the and lower the cue. And lastly, room modes are, do affect the reverberation times. Um, so you can see that with a reverberation test or an impulse test, you can see the, the lingering. And if you control it, if you add some absorption, then of course that's going to go away. In the next segment, we'll talk about solutions for room modes. I'll hope to see you then. Thanks.